All right, parents and students. So just a little quick rundown is kind of some basics with Compass Learning. Um, and we'll uh, hopefully that'll answer the majority of questions and then anything else you can come talk to me. All right, but just uh, a few positives about Compass Learning. It is all online, which means you can work at school, at home, you know, basically anywhere where you can get internet access. Um, you have the ability to work on it. So if you want to finish sooner, you can finish sooner because you work at your own pace. If you need a little bit more time to work on it, you can have a little bit more time. So, you know, as fast or as slow as you need to. And when you're in the class, the math remediation class, you actually have a certified math teacher, that's me, um, to help with any, you know, questions or any other help you need. Okay, so just a few positives about this math remediation. It is an opportunity for you to make up that math that you've missed, regain some of that knowledge, and get yourself going um, so that you can be more productive, more successful in your regular math class, and you don't have to go to summer school or anything like that to make up your math credit. A few expectations we have, okay, for those in the class or when you're even doing it this at home, okay, you've got to pay attention. They're going to take you through a lesson and then they are going to give you a quiz. You've got to pay attention. You cannot learn if you don't pay attention. I know that may seem like some new information for some of you. You cannot learn if no paying attention is happening. Okay? Take notes. In my classroom I've got paper. Bring a notebook. Um, you need to take notes. It's going to be part of your grade first of all. But second of all you can use them on the quiz and those notes can help you just give you some guidelines to look back on um, as you are taking those quiz those quizzes okay you can ask questions as well okay that's why I'm in the classroom to help you out if you have questions now um, I may not give you the exact answer you're looking for but I will help you um, get to where you need to be okay so make sure you're doing all of these and make sure that you are making some sort of progress um, this is to help you. I'll give you as much time as you need, but if you're not making progress, then something else is happening and we'll have to discuss that. So make sure that you are doing all of this stuff. So now let's talk about how we, uh, you know, just some basics about how to get into Compass Learning. Okay, first of all, the website. Okay, this is the most critical, especially if you're doing it at home because I won't be there to help you. But the most critical here is this website. Okay compass.twillaschools.org okay you don't have to worry about that though you can put it in if you want to okay if you do not type this into an address bar you will not get to the right page even though it'll look exactly the same okay the the front page will look exactly the same but your password and your login that stuff won't work okay so that's got to go into the address bar if it comes up with a Google search, you're not going to find the right place. Okay, So make sure you're typing this into the address bar. I can't say that enough. I've had a lot of issues with this, and kids don't think that their login is correct because of that, when we find out that that was just what happened. Okay, So this is the login page, um, and you've got your username and your password. Okay. That's what we are, you know, that's what you're going to have to input into there. So the username follows this format. It's T, then your last name, then your first initial of your first name. So an example for me would be T, Rydalch, T. That first T stands for the school since it's Twilla. They just do a T. So T, then my last name, then the first initial of my first name. Okay. Unless you've got one of those common last name, first name combos, there might be a little more added to this. And if that's the case, you know, I'll make sure you understand that. But for the most part, this is what it's going to be. T, last name, first initial. Your password is going to be TH for Twilla High, and then your lunch number. 
Okay. So for mine, it would be TH and then whatever my lunch number was, which I don't buy lunch here, so I'm not sure. We'll just say one, two, three, seven, two, something like that. Okay, that's what you'll need to log in, but you've got to make sure that address is correct. If that address is not correct, this won't work. I, it'll look exactly the same, but it won't work. Okay, so that's how we log in. And so anywhere where you have internet access, use that login information, and it'll bring you here. Okay, and I borrowed a student, so thank you, Charlie. Um, this is kind of what you'll see. There's a lot of information here. First of all, your name. So if it's not your name, then chances are you somehow hijacked somebody else's. There's some links right here. Um, when we'll talk about those, there's also some things up here. Okay. First of all, do not use that mail. You, it'll it'll look like you can send it to me, but I rarely check that mail. Use my school email, which I'll give you at the end. This discussion I haven't really dealt with, so you really don't need to probably deal with that. When you log out, obviously you'll need that, and if you have some help, you can get that. Okay. But what you'll see is some courses. These are icons here. These are your courses. Okay. Now, the only courses you're actually going to do are the ones with the circles around them. Whenever we log someone in, it makes us choose a course, but we don't know which course you'll need. So often you'll see this thematic projects. That's just kind of a placeholder. And um, Algebra 1, unless it has that a cool circle around it like this, you know, it won't, you won't have to do that one. So it's just another placeholder. So it's simply these ones, like this, Health, and U.S. History. So yours will typically be some sort of math one, but that's what you uh, will click on. When you click on one of those, like let's take for example that one, US History, we click on that, you'll see a folder. This will tell you which term you have. Sometimes you may have a couple terms okay, to make up depending on what you need to make up. So that's what you'll click on. You'll click on that and then you'll have some folders. The star tells you which ones you need to do next. If you pass some, you'll do a check mark. So basically it just goes like this. You take do a lesson, sometimes two or three, and then you do a quiz. If you don't pass the quiz, it'll kick you back because you need some extra help on it. If you pass the quiz, it'll just move you along and you keep moving through. When you're done with everything that's in your term, you're good to go. And you will be finished with that. If you need to get back to the home, that home screen, you just click on the home screen. Okay? Simple enough. If you need to search for some stuff, you've got a little search um, icon right there as well. Because sometimes you can search for uh, maybe you already watched the video and you're on the quiz but you wanted to go back and just watch the video again, you can do that. Okay, now probably the most important icon here on the left side is the grade book. Okay, you click on that you can chart your progress and your grade and you're going to need to be able to do that this year. Okay, if you have more than one term you can um, toggle between them using that drop down menu. It'll tell you the quizzes you've taken, how many times you took it, you know, when you completed it, and what your score is. Okay? Now, on these we're looking for 70% or higher. If you get below 70%, it'll kick you back through. And we're trying to do that because if you take a quiz or a, a test, if you have to take a chapter test, it just takes your score. So if you have the score low on that, you need higher quizzes to bump you up. Okay, down here it tells you your progress. How many items you have to do, how many you've done, and what percentage complete you are. Then it also gives you your grade. Okay, that needs to be above 60%. Below 60% you're not passing. No sense doing a whole, redoing a whole term just to fail again. Okay, so that's great book. That's a really great one to, to look at. Okay. Another one is the portfolio. This is kind of another way that you can check on your grades. This recent work tab, you don't really need to worry about that. Assignments, you can click on these details and then kind of pull up a similar thing to your grade book, though not as easy to use, um, and you can kind of get some stuff. The nice thing about it, you can print it if you want to. Okay. The other one we have is reports, right there. For the reports, you have to choose your subject, what types of activities, 
um, typically you're going to enter a data range um, and it'll kind of go through and you can scroll down here and it'll tell you, oh, on this quiz you got this. And once again, kind of like the gradebook. The gradebook does all this stuff a lot easier, but this, in case you need to print it off for me, you can make it a PDF and then send that to me, email that to me, or print it to me um, in those cases when you finish and you want to have that hard copy. Okay, another um, thing we have is uh, and I won't talk about the writer, um, because in the math we really don't use it that much, or really at all. So don't worry about that. You can look at it if you want. This toolkit, it pulls up this window, and you can go through all the courses. And when you click on a course, it'll have some different toolkits. Um, so like a calculator, um, base 10 blocks, algebra tiles, coordinate graphing. You know, it has stuff that you can use to help you as you're trying to um, work on these these courses. Alright, so if you have any questions or you need some help, um, here's my school email address. Please use that. If you're working on the weekend and you get locked out, meaning you fail a quiz three, sometimes four times, um, it'll lock you out and I have to, you know, you have to come talk to me about that. Um, you can email me if it's over a long weekend or something like that and you're trying to work on it. Or if you have any questions, that's for parents or students, you know, please let me know what's going on, and if you have questions, please ask. So there you go.